Now I'd like to share a story of how a senior manager can use the tools and levers at his disposal, given his role in the organization, to effectively act on his values. I'd like to introduce you to Jeff Sallett. People who met Jeff Sallett would say he was the kind of person who, at a very deep level, knew who he was. He was focused and a student of leadership. He held enormous respect for good leaders and therefore had very high expectations of them and of himself. Over the course of more than a decade, Salad had worked his way up the ranks in the financial function at a major industrial products company, a company he'd chosen to work with precisely because of its strong values-driven culture and leadership. So in just a few months, Salad was poised to assume the role of corporate controller from his direct boss, who in turn was to become the executive vice president for strategy and business development. Now while on the verge of this major career advance, Salat faced what years later he would call a defining moment. He felt significant pressure from several executives in charge of the company's businesses to record restructuring charges in their quarterly reporting that would present a more favorable, and Salat believed distorted, picture of the company's performance. Salat believed that the boundaries of, of appropriate accounting were being pushed too far, and he was very uncomfortable with the request. Now, in his previous roles, he'd not been directly involved in such decisions, but he began to realize that this was probably not an isolated incident. Although the company's leadership would certainly not go to jail over this decision, Salat believed these questionable practices were pushing the limits of honest reporting. If the practices continued, they could create an environment where still more problematic decisions would become acceptable, even expected. And he felt that he could be putting his own future at risk. In his conversation with a senior operating executive at the company, Salat was told that if he couldn't handle these decisions, perhaps he should think about moving on. Salat had always been drawn to positions of leadership, and he was poised to take on the biggest opportunity of his career to date. But he had to wonder if the increased influence and power of the corporate controller's role would be enough to address the increased responsibility for maintaining his company's integrity. How could he change existing practices and pressures to stretch accounting practices when the very authors of those practices were still at the company? What kind of response would be persuasive to executives who argued that all companies were doing this? He had to wonder how widespread and widely accepted these practices were at his own employer. How far up and down the organization did they extend? He even asked himself, why hadn't he recognized these problems earlier? Had he been so biased, so predisposed to not see anything that might cross the line? And Salat also recognized that he was about to be held more responsible for the company's financial health and its financial reporting than ever before, and any changes he made could have major repercussions. So now he faced a situation where not only did he have to make a choice about his own behavior, he also had to make a choice about the kind of company for which he would take responsibility. Would his new seniority increase or constrain his ability to deal with this challenge? How and when could he act on his values effectively?